Hey everybody. <laughs> All right, back at you in our backyard. Gonna do a little backyard video. It's a requested video, okay? And I have the one and only Nick behind the camera. Say hi, Nick. hey -o. See, isn't it great? All right, now, <clears throat> maybe this will go smoother with him behind the camera. Now, let me start off by saying I am not a survival expert, okay? I'm not a bug out kind of person. I am a bushcrafter and a camper, okay? So everything you're gonna see in this video is gonna be my opinion, okay? You can take from it, you can leave from it, okay? But the thing is, is the simple fact that I'm a bushcrafter, I understand how serious survival is, so some of my opinions are gonna insult other people. <laughs> yes, they are. They are very offensive. They will be very offensive. And it's probably gonna take me forever to answer the comments on this video. And any of the gear that you see in this video, now that YouTube has changed it, made it to where I can put links in the comments, it may take me a few days to answer your comments, but I'll eventually get you an answer if there's any kind of gear here that you wanna know what the name of it is or where I got it or where you can get it or more information about it, okay? Now, the requested part of this video is the simple fact that a friend of mine that's 50 years old has never been camping ever. And with the state that the economy and the world is, everybody's interested in bugging out. So they want my opinion. And I've been asked before about my opinions about what goes into a bug out bag. And so I finally gonna make the video. Now, first off I will say, I have, I have two philosophies. And I'm gonna refer back to these on a lot of the gear that I choose, but when you're thinking about a bug out bag, and I'm not necessarily talking about short term because there's plenty of short term bug out bag videos out there. I'm talking long term. I'm talking, you're gonna be out there for a year. You're gonna be literally living there. And that's like the difference between like maybe an urban bug out bag. They, you may be in hiding one or two days or three days. And that's also like the difference in survival. Survival gear is using gear to get back home. A bug out bag is completely different, and I think people are getting survival bags mixed up with bug out bags. Bug out bags are for like, you may want to live out in the wilderness for a year. So, this is long term. Now, my philosophies, okay? Try to make things better, not worse, okay? That's my number one philosophy. And I'll explain what that means as I'm going through these bags, okay? Now, try to carry gear that has more than one use, okay? Saves weight. But you wanna carry basically everything that you can possibly carry to make life better, okay? Now, enough rambling, let's just try to get onto it here. This is where I start insulting other people's opinions. <laughs> All right, you ready, Nick? Here we go. Now, this is your typical lightweight backpacker style backpack, okay? This is fine if you're going to be hiking and weekend camping and if you're going to be like on the trail, you know, the Appalachian Trail, whatever. That's wonderful for that, okay? This is not heavy duty enough to last a year or two or three years in the wilderness, okay? I would not make this a bug out bag under no circumstances. I've had several of these in the past. The straps rip, the belts rip, the clips rip, everything breaks on them. And it just, it won't hold up to a rugged, a rugged environment okay now everybody that knows me knows that i love alice bags okay this jewel is a medium alice it is actually too small for a long-term wilderness bag because the cubic inches is uh what was the cubic inches on this medium alice neck uh 2500 cubic inches okay 2500 cubic inches okay that's not good, that is not enough. Might be okay if you plan on a two or three day bug out, but that is just not enough, okay? That is a medium Alice, okay? Now, over here, this, you can see the comparison in size of the two. This is a large Alice, okay? I might be more prone to use a large Alice if I had to, but, and because the large Alice is, uh, how many cubic inches is this one, Nick? 3,800 cubic inches. Okay, you got 3,800. This was 24. 2,500. This is 38. Huh? 2,500. 2,500. Okay, 2,500 on a medium. And uh, what was it? 3,800. 38. Okay, I can't never remember these numbers on the medium. Okay, but these are basically my bushcraft bags. Now, the only reason that I say that I wouldn't necessarily use these jewels for 
um, bug out is because I like for everything to be inside a bag, okay? Because, you know, a lot of times I'll take things like, uh, I'll take things like this and I'll strap it to the bottom of these bags right here. And uh, I don't, <clears throat> that's like I say, that's fine for my bushcrafting trips, you know, to have this kind of stuff. But I want everything inside my bag. I don't know if it's going to be raining. I don't know if it's going to be snowing. I'm I don't know if I'm going to be trudging through a swamp. And I don't want a, too much stuff strapped to the outside of my bag. Okay? Makes sense? All right. Sounds good. Now, moving right along, over here we have what I would choose to carry. Okay? Um, let me scoot it over here where you can see it. Oh, let me move this stuff around. Now, on a long term... You wouldn't follow me. <laughs> on a long term... <laughs> gotta pay attention to it. On a long-term wilderness situation, uh, this is the bag that I would have either in my truck or in my van if I was expecting it. And the way it would sit in there is on top, I would have some kind of a waterproof Gore-Tex hat with a rim on it. Okay, that's a must-have. Pull that over there. And then I would have a jacket laying on top of it. Not necessarily part of a bug-out bag, but I'm going to show it because it would be on there. I wouldn't carry a regular jacket. I would carry some kind of a Gore-Tex jacket with a, a hood. You gotta have a hood of some kind, okay? Gore-Tex jacket, all right? And in the pockets of it, I would have, this looks like a tube. I can't remember the name that we've been through it before. It's like a neck warmer because you can put it around your neck because you never know when winter's gonna come and it can be brutal. But you can either put it around your neck you can keep your neck warm or you can pull it up over your head, okay? That's going to stay in one pocket, okay? And in the other pocket, I would have a toboggan and a pair of wool glove liners, okay? Those would stay in the pocket, okay? Normally, I wear, uh, people that have seen me in my videos, I wear an M65 field jacket. Them things are all cotton. But I would, I would wear this because not only is it a waterproof Gore-Tex with a full hood, but on the inside, I would have a fleece, fleece jacket, fleece liner. That way, if it's real cold, I could wear that. Or if it wasn't too cold, I could just leave this out and just have this, this Gore-Tex shell. And I think that's marketed under, I think it's marketed under extreme, extreme climate weather parka, I think. I'm not real sure. Well, let's see, it says it inside here. Yeah, inside it says, uh, Parka, extended cold weather camouflage. Okay, that's for in case you want to look that up. Okay, all right, let me move this over here to the side. Now, oh, and I would have boots, a pair of leather boots. Uh, preferably waterproof, possibly Gore-Tex. You can't get by without boots. Sneakers ain't gonna get it, okay? Now, let me lay this over here, behind here, so that I can lean it up and you can see. Let's start out, this is the Molly 2 rucksack, okay? As you can see, it's gigantic, and I'm probably going to get insulted a lot for carrying this, but like I said, this is a long-term wilderness bag, and this has pretty much everything that you can live off the land for at least a year reasonably comfortably and uh you know if you think you can't you got to think about something like that show naked and afraid those people go out there and yes they starve to death but they don't die but they they live 21 days with no clothes and one item okay so surely if you've got a fully equipped pack you can last a year and you could possibly last four or five years you don't know this is long term. You don't bug out thinking you're going to come back to your home in three days. Right? All right. Now let's start out with uh, the number one thing is on the outside of your pack. You need a first aid kit. Okay? Now, it needs to be accessible. What's in the first aid is going to be the standard type stuff, bandages, band-aids, and things. And you can tailor this towards your allergies if you want to. It, there, it's going to be different for everyone, okay? Now, 
you're going to wind up in your kit as far as fire. I'm probably going to be jumping around a lot on these subjects. But as far as fire goes, you're going to want to carry four lighters. Okay, four big lighters. And you're going to want to carry four ferro rods. Okay, but you don't want to have them all in the same place. You want to put them in different places. Okay, because fire is your life. Fire keeps you warm. Fire boils your water. Fire cooks your food. Okay, you got to have fire. Okay, now <clears throat> let's hit on uh, cutting tools. Okay. Oh, incidentally, one thing I forgot, the Molly 2 rucksack, I don't have a whole bunch of stuff attached to the outside like I would on an Alice. This is 5,000 cubic inch, okay? And it has a plastic frame, okay? It's got a plastic frame with a kidney belt, and uh, the, 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 uh, the belt on this thing is a whole lot more heavy duty. Can you zoom down here on this? You know how to zoom? Yeah. I'm this zooming. is a whole lot more heavy duty than those the clips on those lightweight backpackers bags. Okay, and I feel like this will last a lot longer. Okay, and it's it's pretty comfortable. Now, <clears throat> I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of complaints about everything in here, <laughs> but <clears throat> this is 42 pounds, and I have been told in the past that some of the soldiers' bags are 80 to 100 pounds. So I think if you're a civilian and you're bugging out for your life, 40, 30 to 40 pounds is not too much to ask. But this is 40, 42 pounds, okay? Now let's get to cutting tools, okay? On cutting tools, in my opinion, if you're anywhere you're at, period, it does not matter where you're at, if you're bugging out, you need some kind of a knife, okay? Now, for me, a Mora is the knife that I want because it's got a Scandi grind. Anything with a Scandi grind is going to be good for bushcraft type, well, wood carving type chores, okay? So, you definitely need a knife, okay? Now, if you're in a warm climate, you are absolutely, positively going to need a machete. Preferably a short machete, not a real super long one, unless you're going to be like in the jungle or where there's lots of vegetation. You're going to need a good short machete, one that you would be willing to trust your life to. Okay, this is an Ontario SP53. I'm still convinced this is the finest machete on earth, the best survival tool ever made. Okay, now the reason I say a machete in a warm climate is because you will only be using your machete for clearing out campsites, building shelters, and processing enough firewood for cooking, okay? There's a big difference in a cold climate or up north, okay? Because, and I'll show you right here, let's go down in this pouch right here. In this pouch, let me pull that out, see if I can find it. In addition, to your machete, you will also need a folding saw, okay? And my personal preference would be either the Baco Laplander or the Silky Gone Boy, okay? Now, like I said, the machete and the folding saw is for if you're in a reasonably warm climate, okay? If you are in a cold climate, it changes because you have to process enough firewood to help stay warm, okay? So if you're in a, uh, let me get this over here. Oh, man. If you're in a cold climate, you're gonna to wanna to carry a bow saw, okay? Because that thing will really process some big trees. That's what you need. And then you're gonna need an ax. Preferably what they call a camp ax or a boy's ax. You don't, you don't really want a full size ax, but yeah, a cold area when you're dealing with a lot of firewood, that's what you're gonna want, okay? Now, but here I am. I am in the south, so that's the way I am. Now, another thing over here, no matter where you are, you are going to want a multi-tool of some kind, okay? This is a leather man. Let me get one side of this thing done. done. Now, on the multi-tool, it's going to have a lot of extras on it. But the main thing you want is you want a kind of a multi-tool that has a, a pair of pliers on it, needle nose pliers, because the needle nose pliers are going to be good for like digging out splinters and for 
maybe maybe repairing some of your camp gear and curling wire for snares trap building and then of course you're going to have a smaller blade on it okay that's a must i don't care where you go you need a multi-tool that'll be your small blade okay you also need a small folding shovel okay you've got to have a small folding shovel that is a must have a small one okay now with a small folding shovel what that's going to be for is like digging roots sometimes you're going to be getting roots for teas or if you're going to make like a chicory coffee or any kind of roots to eat uh, if you're going to be digging uh, onions or wild garlic uh, you'll need this uh, digging up cattails whatever and also for when you dig your cat hole for whenever you have to go to the bathroom in the woods <laughs> you're going to want to dig a cat hole so and do it 100 yards away from campsite, 100 yards away from your water supply, okay? Now, another good thing about this is, all right, well, not about this. Let me mention, here's your other option. If you're going to be using a Dakota fire hole for your shelter or for your cooking, that's probably not going to get it. You're going to want to use what's called an E-tool. This has got Alice clips, but if you had to, it'll fit on the outside of a molly pack. And, and uh, E-Tool is a folding type shovel, okay? You fold it out and it's like a shovel, or you can turn it like this. E-Tool stands for entrenching tool, or you can turn it this way, and you can use it for digging like this, okay? Now, water is life, okay? There is a possibility that you may have to dig for water, all right? This will be good. If you're camping near a creek or a river, the water supply will be no problem. But if all you can find is a small brook or a small stream, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take a shovel and you're going to want to dig a hole in the middle of that stream about a foot deep because you're setting yourself up with a little water reservoir because as that water is slowly trickling down that brook, you want a small reservoir there at your campsite. So that's what you're going to do. You're just going to literally dig a hole. It's going to muddy the water up. But after about an hour, it's going to clean up. It's going to clear up real good. Okay. Now let's see if I've got everything on the outside here. Oh, safety glasses. Nobody ever talks about safety glasses. You need safety glasses because when you're out there hacking with your machete, you don't want to get any chips or anything in your eyes. And another thing is when you're, when you're going through the woods, the last thing you want, you know, you're not out camping bushcraft, and the last thing you want is to have something poke you in the eye and put your eye out. You don't want an eye injury, so a pair of good safety glasses are going to be good, okay? Now, I might have, let's see what this is. Oh, one other thing, of course. In my opinion, on top of your regular knife, you need a good skinning knife, okay? That's a camellias made in the USA. That is an excellent skin and knife. I love it, okay? For skinning small game, because you know good and well you're going to be setting up traps, trapping rabbits and squirrels and things, you know, for eating. Sounds kind of nasty, but you got to live. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. All right, that's that. And down here I have, wait a minute. I pull that off. I have a fishing kit, okay? And inside the fishing kit, I have just your basic fishing kit. Whatever you get is up to you. I've got a bunch of hooks in here. I've got some bobbers, and uh, I got some uh, some spoons, and uh, I got some lead weights in here. Okay, and I got some fishing line. I have more fishing line in the pouch that we'll be talking about. Okay, so that is a small fishing kit. In addition to my small fishing kit. Okay, I have another fishing kit. <laughs> Always Carrie, come prepared. Be prepared. Carry two fishing kits. And this one, I've got a bunch of trout fishing flies and a bunch of rooster tails and lures in here. Okay, and that's the thing. Rig you up two fishing kits. Okay. All right, I've almost got everything on the outside. Oh, there's one more thing right here I want to cover, and then we're going to change the camera position while I start pulling everything out of the inside of the bag. Uh -oh. A couple of options on the machete. 
on this machete here. Now this machete over here that I've got my Ontario SP53, I've got a Mora Bushcraft Black mounted to the outside of it. Any of these machetes, I think this is the uh, this is the RTAC 2. Any of these short machetes like this, a lot of these pouches, or the sheaths I mean, come with a pouch, okay? If you're gonna be worried about weight, I'm not worried about weight, I'll carry everything I have to carry. These little pouches are large enough that you can put a multi-tool in the pouch. See, this is not actual part of my kit, but I'm just, I'm showing for an example that you can put a full multi-tool inside that pouch. And another, another thing too, this little jewel here is the uh, Silky Pocket Boy. It's a little short saw. Still, it's a very good saw, very aggressive. It's got a metal lock, very well built. Now, I want to show you something. This thing will actually fit inside this pouch of this sheath, which I think is just absolutely incredible. Because if you want to strap, I've got my machete strapped to the outside of my pouch. I mean, my... my um, my pack so that it can carry with me but let's say that you get lost or something you could have in your sheath you could have a machete and a saw and possibly a ferro rod attached to it if you want to put this on your belt if you don't want to put it on your belt the other cool thing is it's got the molly strap on the back just like this see this has got a molly strap on the back of it so that when I get to camp I can pull it off and I can put it on my belt and wear it around with me as I need Okay. One other thing right here, if you don't want it on your belt, and you don't want it on your, uh, on your pack, another thing you can do is you can rig you up some type of a harness where you can carry your machete on your back, your survival knife on the front with a kit in it with matches and things that you need or a ferro rod. And then you could even put a small knife down here. It could be a bushcraft knife or a uh, skinning knife, or in this case, I have a fillet knife. But what I was gonna say is that after you put your pack on, if you don't want your machete attached to your pack and you don't want it attached to your belt, then you can just put it on like this. And saying you can wear it like this. You got your knife right here in the front and you got your machete on the back, okay? All right, now I'm gonna reposition the camera as I start digging everything out of this pouch, okay? Hope you're not bored yet. Are you bored, Nick? I'm having fun. All right, that's what I wanted to hear, dude. <laughs> All right, now after a little break we took, I found out we're 22 minutes into the video, so I can't go real in depth on these things, but I will. I'll do as best as I can on everything that's in there. Okay. Now, let's whip open the top here and see what we have. Now, up here on the top. Carry as many do-rags as possible, seriously, because cloth, all cotton cloth is just so valuable. Because for one thing, you can wear it on your head like a do-rag. You can use it for like collecting wild edibles and berries and things like that, and you can fold it up and carry it with you. Another thing is you can, if you got a real bad cut on your arm, you can wrap it up real quick. Uh, if you need it as a tourniquet or a wrap around your ankle. Uh, there's probably plenty of other uses for these things too. You know, if you had to, you can wrap it around your neck and keep warm. But uh, there's other provisions in here for that. Okay. Now, pile of do rags. I'm gonna be talking more about them do rags later. Okay. Up in the top, I have a topographical map of the area I am going to. Okay. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the topographical map in a minute when I get on down into my pack. Okay. Topographical map will be good because you're going to know where you're at okay, of your planned bug out area. Now, I have in here a plastic drop cloth. Okay. Now, I'm going to be going back to these things, talking about some of the things that I'm going to be doing with them. And, and uh, <clears throat> this thing is plastic drop cloth can be used for if you want to design like a super shelter for keeping warm or if you need any kind of a vapor barrier for any reason. This is good stuff. This is also good for a solar steel, and it'll also be good in conjunction with a, a hammock I got that I'm gonna explain about using that. Because like I said, this and clear, clear garbage bags, okay? Millions of uses for these. They can be a part of your shelter, or you can fill them full of leaves. Uh, 
You can fill them full of leaves, make a comfortable bed out of them. Uh, fantastic. These are the two items. Uh, try to find more than one use for the gear you carry. <laughs> this is it. And I may be going back, like I said, I'll be going back to them here in a minute. Now, as far as carrying cordage, okay, you will need at least one hank of rope, okay? As far as I'm concerned with the rope, rope could be good for shelter building. Rope is necessary for if you need a ladder for getting up and down into a tree. There ain't no telling what you're going to need to get into a tree for. If you need to get lower yourself down a cliff or into a ravine, you're going to need rope. Never leave your rope behind. I'll always carry your rope. Carry 100 feet of rope, okay? Part of your bug out system. Now, as far as tarps go, okay, carry one, one, if it's going to be a warm climate, carry one big tarp. If it's going to be a cold climate, in general, you can use a big tarp for anything, but if it's going to be a cold climate, two tarps seem to work better to set up a shelter with a fire, okay? Plenty of tarp shelters out there, but that's just a real quick on the tarp, okay? But you need a tarp, period. you got to have a tarp, okay? Now, digging around in here, you're going to need a canteen, and in the canteen, you're going to need a lighter, okay? You also need which I don't have with me in this one. There's a couple of items that I took out of here. You also need to carry water purification drops, okay, or tablets. Okay, you got this canteen for clean water. I'll set that right there. And then inside it, you've got a cup, okay. If you were a bushcrafter or a camper or a hiker, you may be cooking out of this cup, but you need other provisions. This is just too small for long-term wilderness survival. It's just too small to cook out of. This will be your drinking cup, okay? All right, set that over there. This is a coffee pot. You've got to have some kind of a hanging coffee pot, okay? Now, I have taken the insides out of it because you're not going to be drinking coffee, okay? You're gonna use this. What you're gonna use this for is you're gonna use this thing for making soup and boiling water and purifying water. Okay, and it's neat because you got a little snout right there too for uh, pouring the hot water out. Okay, now the other thing about this, here I'm going back to the do rag thing, is if you're near the ocean, you can take your do rag and you can fold it over multiple times. Okay, if you were if you wound up on an island or if you wound up on an ocean, what you want to do is you want to fold this over multiple multiple times. Fill this full of uh, salt water. Okay, and you lay this over the top, and you put it over the fire, and you let the water hit it, and as it turns into steam, this is going to become drenched. Okay, this will be fresh water. The salt will fall back down into the bottom. When this becomes drenched, you'll squeeze it out into your cup. Once you've got it all squeezed out, then you're going to put this back over it, over the fire, and once you've processed all the salt water, you're going to have salt down in the bottom of your container. Okay, so that's another good reason for it. But it's good. A coffee pot is a good that is a good addition. And I've taken the insides out. If you want to bring the insides, then what you can do is you can take uh, where is it? See, I've already got stuff piled up everywhere. Where's my shovel? <laughs> okay, you want to you want to take that's another good example. If you want some kind of a hot beverage, you can take your shovel and you can dig some chicory root and you can roast the roots and then mince them up and you can put them into that basket and you can actually make like a coffee type beverage, okay? And it just, it makes life a little better because it's like I say, try to make things better, not worse, <laughs> okay? Because a lot of people drink a lot of coffee and then you're gonna wind up, you're gonna wind up with a headache from not drinking. Now this is a brand spanking new uh, Kated In Hiker Pro, okay? It's a water filter, it's got a, a washable a washable element, ceramic element in it, okay? Your body is 70% water, and I know on some of them survival shows, they show them running around stabbing pigs and chasing bears and killing everything because they say, oh, we got to have food. Water it spells the difference between life and death, so you need to carry a water filter, okay? And it's like I say, another thing, too, is with these do-rags, if you're going to carry... If you're going to carry the uh, tablets, you can use a do-rag as a pre-filter for your water. 
and then you can drop in a, a tablet or some drops in here but the problem with that is is those tablets those tablets are going to they're going to they're not going to last forever they're going to be gone and then your water treatment capabilities will be vanished into thin air so try to make things better not worse <laughs> okay you're going to run out of tablets with this thing right here it's got a washable filter so what you want to do is use it and process as much water as you can and keep clean water in here okay during the initial wash of this ceramic filter you're going to want to wash it out in the creek or the river then the final rinse will be with clean water you've stored in here okay long term makes things better not worse <laughs> okay the do rag more than one use for any item okay need i say more now well, let's go ahead and talk about this another thing you want to do is you want to carry a stainless steel bottle okay now here's a neat little trick and i know i'm gonna get insulted and called names and, and, and insulted over this but what you want to do is carry a couple of band-aids on it with the do-rag okay now the idea behind this is is if things get really ugly i mean really ugly and it's kind of a wide mouth bottle stainless steel if you had to you could boil water in it but my idea behind this is, is you got these rubber bands, okay? What you want to do is you want to fold this over a couple of times, okay? Take charcoal from your fire. Now, this is a last ditch effort for if you don't have any uh, tablets or anything for purifying your water uh, or you don't have your filter. This is a last ditch effort, but it works. Bust up some charcoal from your campfire and set it right here in the middle. Fold this over and then gently set it on the top okay so what you now got is you have you have a, a couple of layers of cloth you have charcoal from your campfire and then you got more layers of cloth okay then what you want to do is you want to wrap your your uh, rubber band around it right there and then you want to wrap another rubber band around it right here okay and then you take this because you have cloth charcoal and cloth and you take this entire stainless steel container and you set it down in a creek with this aimed upstream and set a rock on top of it. No, downstream. Downstream. Because as the sediment comes down, it'll hit this and the water that comes around will get on here. Okay? Set it in there overnight with a rock on it. When you wake up the next morning, this thing will be filled with reasonably safe water. A lot safer than if you just dipped it in and started drinking okay so and don't do that for the record yes try to don't do that yeah don't do that all right i'm gonna put that right there okay that might be all now let me go ahead and pull this out on the water purifying now okay on your camp gear don't be whenever you're trapping and snaring and killing fish don't be sticking your fish or your meat on sticks. That's not a good idea. Carry a pan. Cook it in a pan, okay? All right, you gotta carry a pan. And then in here, I'm gonna be jumping around on subjects a lot, but I'm just trying to cover everything that's in here. You want a pan, okay, for cooking your meat. And then you want, for your pot, you want some kind of a pot that you can hang got to have some kind of a hanger and this will be for like your soups and stews and you know things like that that you want to cook also in last ditch effort it could be for purifying water okay now another thing is you also want to carry a small grill if you can because sometimes you can't hang things sometimes you got to take a grill and you can set whatever pan you have on here and it's like you might could just set this directly in the fire over charcoals but if you had to cook out of this you can set this on it a grill don't weigh nothing you can put meat directly on it and another thing too in one of my other videos i showed how you can rig up a smoker if you're going to smoke meat it's good to have it hanging over a grill okay because if you if you find happen to kill something big enough and you want to smoke your meat a grill is good so you can process a large amount of meat you make beef beef jerky that last up to a week which can be very necessary okay uh inside here it doesn't hurt to have a couple of little lightweight cups bowls have you a little plastic spoon as this stuff wears out over a period of time spend time carving you a wooden spoon wooden fork stuff like that but for now this doesn't weigh much throw it in another thing you need is some pieces of leather 
okay leather is good for that's your your mitten for holding this up whenever you go to eat your food you can set your pot on it and and hold it right here you can eat straight out of the pot <laughs> carry leather okay another thing you can do another thing you can do is this is called let me look at the inside of it this is a hot knot hot knot by esp and what it is is it is a no mix sleeve okay if you're going to be dealing with campfire this no mix is fireproof you can use this in conjunction with the leather for if you got a roaring fire you can use it for handling hot cook wire you can you can get into the fire and and, and you won't get burned that's it's not really a necessity, but I have it and I like it. It's a good thing to have. Ah, let me get it off. Put that in there. Oh, I'm going to have a mess to clean up when I get done. All right. And this bag here. Let me go over this real quick because this is another part. Let me put this here. Okay. For your blanket. Okay. Poncho. Okay. You want to carry a poncho as opposed to a rain jacket simply because not only can this poncho double as a tarp. Remember what I said? Try and carry gear, it's got more than one use. This poncho has a hood and you can't take a rain jacket and cover up your backpack. But this thing, you can wear it and you can drape the backside over your backpack, okay? And a little more on this here in a minute, but basically with the poncho, uh, another thing you can do with it, not only does it keep you out of the rain and you can use it as a tarp, but you can also use it as a sleeping bag. This thing is called a wooby or a poncho liner. The reason they call it a wooby is because without it, you will be cold. <laughs> <laughs> and basically what it is, it is a lightweight blanket and it has tie outs on it, okay? Now, one thing I want to mention, one time I was reading some of the, sometimes I read the reviews on Amazon because I was wanting to know the difference between if this, if what I'm buying is a general, genuine U.S. government issue or one made in China. Try to get the genuine government U.S. issue. But I had several people that was making comments that said, I don't like this. It doesn't have a head hole in it. And I'm like, a head hole? <laughs> well, what they're thinking is they're thinking when you hear the name poncho liner, they're thinking that you actually put your head through it and you put it over you and then you put the poncho on. Well, that's not what they mean by poncho liner. What they mean by poncho liner is you wear this as a raincoat, but when you get done with it, you lay it out. For those of you that ain't done, and I'm not gonna go through the full ordeal of it, but what you do is where these tie outs are on the poncho liner, they are designed to go through these eyelets, okay? But then once you've got all this laid out, can you see much of this, Nick? How much of this can you see? I can get it all in. Okay. Now once you've got this uh, poncho liner inside here and you've got it tied off, you fold it over, okay? I'm trying to fold it over though. And what it is is basically it becomes a sleeping bag, okay? That's the idea behind poncho liner. It's not meant to wear it as a liner for when you're wearing the poncho. You make a sleeping bag out of it. Okay? Isn't that cool? That's like comfy. I said, try to carry more gear. Gear that has more than one use, and that's it. It's a multi-use item. You're, you're, you, it's a blanket, it's a liner, it's a sleeping bag. It keeps the rain off of you, okay? Now, I'm going to pull that out because this has yet another use that I'll, I'll tell you about in a minute. All right, throw this back behind there. Now... <clears throat> This is another item that I want to talk about. I'm probably going to insult some people. But I saw a guy that he said on his number one item of his bug out list is a flashlight and batteries. And I think his number two item was like 30 more batteries. Well, what's going to happen after about a month? You just carried into the wilderness a flashlight and a bunch of batteries, and you're going to be sitting there with a bunch of dead batteries. <laughs> Which breaks my other rule. Try to make things better, not worse. <laughs> If you get used to a flashlight and all the batteries die, you have nothing, okay? So what you want to carry, solar-powered flashlight and radio, okay? This thing will last for years, and you will always have light, okay? 
This is an Eton Scorpion. It's the best one made, okay? Like I said, try to make things better, not worse. And that right there, it's also got a weather radio. There may or may not be weather broadcast in the future, I don't know, but at least you've got a flashlight and you can know somehow or another what's going on with the outside world. Oh, one other thing. The poncho, when you wear one, the rain comes down it and bounces off and gets on your legs. So I always carry in conjunction with a poncho a pair of rain pants, okay? 100% nylon rain pants, okay? That's another must-have. Doesn't weigh nothing, comes in a little pouch, you just unravel them, you slide them over your regular pants, okay? Now, see what else we got in here. I'm not going over that yet. What's in here? Oh, okay, this is my cordage bag. Now, you should carry some people think that you should carry, uh, they have different opinions on cordage, but for me, I like to carry several different hanks of paracord, okay? And I have, I have several different hanks of it right here. I have like 12 foot hanks, I have 24 foot hanks, and then naturally I have two 50 foot hanks of paracord, okay? The good thing about this is it's seven strand paracord. If you have to, you can cut it apart and pull those out and you can use those small cords in there for with the fish hooks for like limb lines. That way, whenever you'll, you'll tie off a limb and hang the hook down in the water, if you have to, you can use that, if you have to, okay? That's my cordage, set that right there. That's kind of a multi-use item. You have to have paracord. And then I also keep in the cordage bag a couple of extra spools of fishing line. You can never have too much fishing line. And that's like those two fishing kits, they are slap full of hooks. Because a lot of times, instead of necessarily tying to a pole and fishing, you want a bunch of limb lines tied off all up and down the river of the creek. Because you want them working for you while you're not there, okay? Let it collect the food for you while you're not there, okay? Now, stupid cats are fighting. <laughs> all right, let's see. And down in here in the bottom of the bag, Okay, right here in this bag here, let's open this up and see what we have in here. This is a mesh bag. A mesh bag could possibly be used to make a type of a fish trap, or maybe even a water filter if you had to, okay? This thing here is called, I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's like a shamog or something, or a curafu or something. It's them things that them soldiers wear around. You can either wear it around your neck, you could use this for some kind of a filter of some kind. You can wrap it around your head. You know, if the mosquitoes get real bad while you're sleeping in cold weather, you can put it over your head, you know. Lots of uses for that, okay? Now, when you go to the bathroom, I've seen some bug out bags. You know you're gonna to go to the bathroom, okay? Go 100 yards away from your camp, 100 yards away from your, um, your um, water supply. Okay, now, don't carry toilet paper, okay? The simple fact is don't carry toilet paper. You want to make things better, not worse. If you bring toilet paper, you're going to run out and it's going to be a nightmare, okay? And don't wipe the leaves. Carry three washcloths, okay? This is what you will use. You will rinse them out. Preferably, you're going to go 100 yards downstream. You're going to go two feet from your water source and dig a hole, and this is what you will rinse you'll rinse the first time in that water hole. Don't rinse it directly in the creek, okay? And dig a new hole next to the creek every probably week, okay? It's just, and I'm gonna get bad insulted on that. People saying, because there's both opinions. Some people say that you can wash it off in the creek and let it run on downstream. And then other people say that you should dig the hole next to the creek and rinse it out the first time in that curry, in that hole and then bring it over and dip it in the curry, okay? Either way, I'm probably gonna get insulted for talking about it, but basically don't bring toilet paper because it's gonna run out. These'll, this'll last you a year or more, okay? Now, in the summertime, you're gonna be dealing with bugs, so you want a full size, inside this little bag here, you want a full size mosquito net. This mosquito net is plenty big enough to go over. This is one of those kind that goes over a, a, um, a military bunk and it's got the tie outs. Now, not only will this thing go over your hammock, 
but if you build a shelter frame, you can put this over your entire shelter so that you can get full access in the summertime to the wind blowing, cooling you off, and your tarp will be mounted up in a tree up above you to keep the rain off of you. And you can see this thing's gigantic, okay? Another thing you can do with this thing is you might in a pinch, but I wouldn't do it, you might could use this in conjunction with a net hammock for a fish trap, okay? Which leads to other things. I personally, I've got a tarp that I can use. I got a machete that I can build a frame for my shelter. I've got my poncho liner that I can make a sleeping bag out of. But I know I'm gonna bug out or I'm gonna be where there's trees. So I will bring straps. I think they're called slap straps. I think, I can't remember. And an Eno hammock. Eno, they make an eagle nest and a double eagle nest. This is a double eagle nest. It's a nylon hammock, very comfortable. And what I'll do is I'll use the straps and I'll stretch my hammock from tree to tree, okay? If it's cold weather, you can use, the, the poncho liner has tie outs, so you can use it as an underquilt to your hammock. Once again, try to, what was it? No, not that. <laughs> try to find more than one use for one gear. This is a multi-use item. It can be a blanket, can be an underquilt for your hammock, okay? Now, the other thing about that, I'm not going to open that up because all it is is a, a nylon hammock. The other thing is you want to, in conjunction with that, you want to carry a net hammock, okay? Now this net hammock, what you want to do with it is you want to string it up. You can string it up and you can use it as a chair. There's ways of stringing it up or you can string this up underneath your hammock you sleep in to use this to put your backpack and your gear in to keep it off the ground. Another thing you can do with this is you can use this as a net for fishing, okay? Catch fish with it, multi-use item. And like I said, if you had to catch really small fish, I'd hate to, but you could cut this thing in half and you could use this in conjunction with this. Because like if you were if you're trying to catch fish with this and a big log came downstream, it would rip this if you had this alone. But if you had this this ha net hammock mounted in front of it, it would catch the logs, let the water through, and catch all the small fish you wanted to catch. Okay, multi-use item. And another thing is whenever you're using all this like this, uh, you can use you can use the poncho as your tarp over your uh, hammock. Where'd that thing go? Yeah, over your, your, your regular hammock, okay? And what you'll be doing is you'll be using your paracord to string up the poncho as your rain fly, okay? And once you've got the, the ridge line set up, you can set up your poncho, wrap it back around the tree, and come, at, come back with a double ridge line and rig up your mosquito net for if it's warm weather. Another thing you can do... Oh, man, this is a mess down here. Look at all this. <laughs> Another thing you can do, okay, if it's going to rain, you can rig this hammock up, okay? This is an extra hammock. You won't be sleeping in it. This can be your, you rig this up between the trees, take the plastic drop cloth, and drape it out over this, and it can be a rain catch, okay? 99% of the time, rain is safe is drinking water untreated, okay? If you're near a nuclear power plant or something, or a coal-fired plant, you're gonna have acid rain, but if you're in a wilderness in the middle of nowhere, rain is safe to drink. So you take a plastic drop cloth, lay it over this net hammock, catch the rain, and then you can just scoop up all the water you want and drink it, okay? Ain't, ain't no big deal. Now, oh, let's see. I have got so much stuff here. Let's see if I got anything else down here in the bottom. Oh, okay. I got something else down here. You want to carry... You want to carry an extra pair of pants. And I took it out of here, but you want a small sewing kit. The sewing kit is not in here, but normally you have an extra pair of pants. You'll have an extra shirt. You'll have one extra pair of underwear. And then you'll carry two pairs of wool socks, okay? That way you can rotate your socks. And whenever you can, go barefooted. Uh, carry wool socks or polyester socks. 
Never ever ever carry cotton socks. Cotton socks get wet, they hold the moisture against your feet, and they'll pretty much rot your feet out. Okay, so that's on the clothes that needs to go in the bottom of your bug out bag. You need a sewing kit wrapped up in there. I took it out, it's laying over there. No big deal, I'll show it some other time. Let's see, now. Oh, right here, you want to carry a fleece blanket also. It weighs nothing. Some of these other bags you've seen are ripstop nylon. You want at least one of your bags to be an all cotton bag, okay? The idea behind the all cotton bag is because if things get ugly, once again, the most important thing is water. Uh, you can take an all cotton bag and you can fill the bottom of it with uh, sand and then you can put in some charcoal and then you can put in some rocks, okay? And then you can hang this from a tree then you take one of your plastic garbage bags and you'll hang a plastic garbage bag above this and fill it full of water and poke a hole in it and it will let the water drip into this filter, this homemade filter and then you're going to put your pot below it, okay, if things get ugly, okay, I mean that's a, that's a last ditch effort, but that's another use for a cotton bag, okay. Uh, sand, charcoal, and gravel. Okay, it's another way of filtering. Now, the thing about a fleece blanket is a fleece blanket could be used for anything. You can use it as a blanket. You can uh, wrap it around your body. And another thing you can do, you can wrap it around your neck. And another thing, if I remember how to do it, is you can fold it over. You can put it over your head like this. And you can tuck it under your chin if I remember how to do this. And then you fold it over like this. You stretch it around and you can tie it off right here. And if you have to, you can sleep like that. Okay. One other thing that you can do, this will keep you nice and warm if it gets really brutally cold. Or you can wrap it around your legs, you can wrap it around your feet, depending on what part of your body gets cold. Now another neat trick, a lot of people complain about not having a pillow. Well, you can take one of these Okay, and you can fold it over just like this. See that? Put it around your head. Tie it in a knot. You'll have to try this at home to understand it. It doesn't look good on video. Tie it in a knot. On video, it looks like you're choking yourself. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> Tie it in another knot. Okay, now what you've got here is you got two big giant knots right here. Okay, what you want to do now turn it around backwards and as you can see let me move some of this crap out of the way <laughs> can you because <laughs> i'm gonna try to show you look at all this stuff laying around here i'm gonna try to show you something here you follow me oh i'm gonna lay down are you following me nick yeah i see that right there this is why i say you got to try it at home this is not only a neck warmer but it is also a pillow. Ain't that cool? Inventive. Huh? Inventive. Yeah, very inventive. All right. And once again, it's a blanket. It's a neck warmer. It can carry gear. Try and carry gear that has more than one use. Oh, me. I feel like I'm dying. Okay. Now, let me get this thing off. I have one bag. How many minutes are we at, Nick? We're at about... 50, 50, 50s. This, vi this video is going to be an hour and 10 minutes. People are just going to cut it off. <laughs> I hope not. Okay, now, in the final here, the ripstop bag. Where'd my hat go? <laughs> oh, it's right here. Where? Right there. Okay, I got to put my hat back on. <laughs> I got to look cool. All right. Now, in this final bag, what we have another ferro rod. And as soon as I get to the campsite, I'm going to take this ferro rod and I'm going to put it on there and it's going to be my permanent necklace. Okay? Now, I will have long sleeves. Let me dig around in here a minute. Look, another do-rag. Where's it at? Always carry okay. plenty. I always carry lots of do-rags. Now, my philosophy, try to make things better, not worse. Okay? Don't carry bug spray. You know why? You're gonna make things worse if you carry bug spray and then you run out. Because if you run out, the bugs are gonna get you. We're You're feeling it right now. 
yeah, you're constantly spraying, you're sweating, it's getting in your eyes. Don't carry bug spray, okay? Carry a head net, okay? What you want to do is put the head net on. There you go. Kind of puff it out. Bugs won't bother you, okay? During the summer, you're going to be walking around a lot like this. If you don't snag a hole in this, if you take care of it, it's going to last a long time, okay? Wear long sleeves and wear gloves, okay? I like these Nomex flight gloves, okay? They'll, they'll cover completely up. And another thing to do, these things right here, they will protect you from poison ivy. And another thing, Nomex is flame proof. That's a flame proof material. And this is lamb skin. So that you can reach in there and you can mess around with the fire and you won't get burned. Okay? Nomex flight gloves. They're great to have. They're, they should be a part of your kit. Okay? Now, let me put this up there. Okay. Now, let's see. I think down in the bottom here, okay, down in the bottom here, I have another flashlight, a wind-up flashlight, okay? Remember what I said, try to make things better, not worse. If you have a flashlight with batteries, it's going to die. This will last you for a few years, okay? Now, inside this rag, along with my philosophy of making things better, not worse, don't carry a GPS, okay? If you carry a GPS, eventually all that's going to be is a hard plastic case for your dead batteries. Batteries ain't going to last, and there ain't no stores to buy no batteries in the wilderness, okay? So get you a good compass and learn how to use it, okay? Carry two compasses, okay? Because these are kind of fragile items. If you break one compass, you're going to want to... I can't get it open. That's a good compass case. I can't, I don't use that one that often. <laughs> I use this other one, but anyway, carry two compasses, okay? Which leads back to the topographical map, okay? Now, these things right here will show your direction in and your direction out, okay? What you want to do is if you get lost, you want to carry a topical gra topographical map of your area. If you get lost, this thing has got the elevations, it's got the peaks, it's got the ridge lines, it's got the valleys. And what you can do is if you think you're in a general area, you can use the compass and you can side off of two points to figure out basically where you're at. Okay, another good reason for topographical map. Okay, let's see. Now we've got that. There's another do rag. Let's see what else we have in here. Okay, you got snare wire. I had three times this amount snare wire for setting snares. You'll want to set these and uh, figure four deadfall. Uh, as far as trapping goes, like for trapping, trapping is better than hunting because hunting takes time and energy. Traps and snares, they basically do the work while you're not there. And uh, there's an old saying behind catching meat, uh, strangle, mangle, dangle, and tangle. And what that is is strangling is by using a snare mangling is by using a rock with a figure four deadfall uh dangling is where you have a limb line pulled over with a snare and you grab the animal and yank it up in the air and you'll dangle it and then tangle is where you use some kind of a net of some kind but anyway what you want to do is for uh, naturally the people that are experienced with trapping you're going to find a game trail and you're going to set all of your traps and your snares along that game trail or you can set them near a watering hole where it's obvious where the animals have been going. But if you can't find any signs of any of that, take your compass. And if you're just going to randomly be setting traps and snares, take your comp compass and go two or three hundred paces east, two or three hundred paces, let's say two hundred. Go two hundred paces east of your campsite, set a trap. 200 paces west, 200 paces north, 200 paces south. That way you'll be far enough from your campsite. If you can't find a game trail, that you can set four snares, four traps, and then you'll be able to find them. You'll be able to go back to them. Okay. Now, another thing in this bag, you need bring you a survival guide, a small pocket survival guide, okay? Because you can't remember everything, and if you get tired and delirious and you can't remember and you can't think straight, read your book. Okay? And it'll also keep your mind occupied, too. A lot of good information in there that you can't remember. And a very, very, very important thing is a wild edible identification guide. 
this thing's laminated and when you first get out there you're not going to be familiar with everything and you're going to want to remember you won't remember what you can't eat and what you can't eat what's poisonous and all that kind of stuff and it's like for example learn what you can ahead of time like learn the difference between wild garlic and wild onion but there's other things in here that there's plants that look similar don't try to remember keep a guide with you okay you'll want a tin for making charred material you can make char cloth but you can also char natural material like this because you never can tell you want to conserve your fire making supplies so like the next morning if the fire has died down you want some kind of charred material to blow your embers back into a flame okay so that's good to have have some way of charring some material and we are now down at the bottom of the bag we're nearing in nick carry Aww. a couple of it was fun it was fun wasn't it carry a couple of sharpening devices for your blades okay this is a diamond stone and a ceramic sharpener okay carry a couple of them and then of course in the bottom of the bag what do i have i have another lighter and then i have two ferro rods okay my opinion is try to save the lighter for the dire need times use the ferro rods every chance you get okay learn how to use them ahead of time you're not going to bring these little bug out bags that have like uh these little bug out bags do they have cotton balls and makeup pads don't get used to them learn how to harvest natural materials even if you have to get your first fire going harvest you up some some uh natural charred material it'll take a spark quick learn how to use these conserve your lighter for when you need it uh the only other little suggestion that i would say is and the only name I'll name is uh, that Joe Ted Eye guy that's on Deal Survival. He showed his bug out bag, and I don't know what it was aimed at, but he carried power bars and a four hour energy drink. And to me, if he's thinking that that's a short term bug out bag for like a day or two, I, no problem. I have no problem with that. But if it's long term wilderness, that'll keep you going for two days and you'll crash. What you need to carry with you is a bag of dried rice and a bag of dried beans take a small amount every single day it's not club med and you're not there to fatten yourself up <laughs> you're there to live you're, you're you're hiding out basically carry it and your rice and your beans a little every day supplement it with whatever you can mangle tangle dangle or snakes or or, or what, what wait a minute what was it dangle mangle tangle or strangle yeah <laughs> whatever you can try out or whatever you can fish for use the rice and the beans and stuff i talked and talked and talked until the battery died okay <laughs> and i think i was right in the middle of talking about trapping and fishing and letting that supplement with your rice and your beans and you know if you just eat a little bit every day and get your body used to it and uh, make sure that you take in plenty of water you should be okay all this gear here there's no reason why you can't live out there for a year easy one other thing it was at the bottom of the pack that I got to forgot to mention. See to Summit kitchen sink. Okay, this is a very valuable piece right here, as far as I'm concerned, because what you do is it's in a little pouch and you unzip it, and it springs out. And what it is is it's a five-liter water pail. Okay. Now this is something that you can eventually, as you have time, to collect a whole bunch of pure water. You'll want to take this and you want to put it in your shelter, keep it away from the animals, or use it as a rain catch, or when you catch rainwater, store it in here, okay? You want to store up clean water, and this is a really good way of storing five liters of water, okay? Anyway, I think I have about, I ran a complete battery down on that camera, so I know I have said pretty much everything that I need to say. Um, I don't think there's anything else I need to go over. I've gone over everything. Uh, <clears throat> any questions, put them in the comments. Uh, sometimes here lately, it takes me two to three to four days to answer the comments. Uh, any questions on any of this gear, ask. I'll try to post some kind of comment to it or post a link leading you to it or telling you more about it. And uh, 
Like I said, I'm not a survival expert. I'm a bushcraft or camper. Everything you just saw in this video is my personal opinion on what I would do if I had to run off into the woods and live for a year. And uh, I'm not gonna say it would be easy for me to make it a year out there in the middle of nowhere, uh, but I could make it no problem. I could probably make it more than a year. With this gear, I could go hide out, nobody mess with me. Uh, but anyway, those of you that are interested in this, I hope some of these little tidbits will help you out. But this is basically what I would do if I had to do it. So, you got anything to add, Nick? Mm, no. Nothing. You got any questions about anything I showed? How many do-rags do you actually carry? <laughs> Oh, on a normal day, I got one on my head and one in my pack. And on my long-term wilderness kit, I bet I got 10 of them. Because cotton cloth is king. It, you can make a bag out of it, cover your head, cover your neck, tie up a wound, make a tourniquet out of it, uh, brace up a broken arm, uh, make different kinds of filters out of it. Uh, it's just amazing what you can do with it. Okay. Uh, but I guess that's basically it. I uh, <clears throat> hope you wasn't bored. No. First, no? Okay. First time I've ever done a video in like three takes. <laughs> Look at all this stuff. Look at all this stuff I've got drug out that i got to put up. Do I love y'all y'all people or what? I mean, look at all this stuff. i got I got stuff everywhere. It's going to take, take a year to clean this mess up. But anyway. All right. I hope y'all had fun. And, uh probably be back on a cooking or a shelter video next time I get around but uh thank you Nick for filming uh thank y'all for watching and I will see you in the next one